Thank you. So I'm Gordon NQ4K from the Sterling Park <coughs> Amateur Radio Club. And we have this excellent briefing. It is now, I think, a 109 pages long. I am not going to go through all 109 pages this evening. Uh, you don't have to applaud. If you want the briefing, I will email it to John, but uh, you can also go to www.qsl.net stroke sterling. And there's a link on the left hand side, Virginia QSO party. And you go there and you click on 2021 and everything you wanted to know about the Virginia QSO party is up there more than you ever wanted to know. This is now the, uh, what, the 10th version of this briefing. Every time I look at it or every time I give it, someone makes a suggestion or makes a comment and something in it changes. And that happened just the last time uh, I gave this to the old Virginia hams last week. And I'll show you the change here in a minute. And the change is we have a new plaque this year. And this was recommended by Teresa from the old Virginia hams. And she asked a very simple question. Uh, we have a youth plaque and she, she said, is that available for, for people who are unlicensed? And I said, I would check. So I talked to uh, the USS Wisconsin Radio Club who sponsor the youth plaque and they wanna keep it to licensed amateurs because they have an arrangement where the winner of that youth plaque is invited to the Daytona Ham Fest. And they thought a licensed ham radio operator would have more interest in going to Daytona or however they do it this year than someone who was not. But that got me thinking, what do we do about unlicensed amateurs? And so we said, we're gonna do the same thing almost that field day does. We'll have a plaque for a, a go to station. So single operator, although for some reason we call them participants supervised by a, a licensed ham. And we'll see if that encourages a bunch of people who would not otherwise get on the air to get on the air, you know, maybe uh, sons or daughters or, or, uh, you know, some boy scout or girl scout, or maybe a grandson or granddaughter uh, can get on the air and we'll see what happens. Okay, so so we're continuing to develop our automated log submission process this year. And oh, I will admit it, last year, I made one of the biggest blunders I've made so far. And that is, uh, we decided to bunch certificates and mail them to the high scoring person in the club. And I envisioned people at the club meeting passing out certificates and then coronavirus happened. And I wasn't smart enough to see that there wouldn't be no more club meetings. So I've been talking to a lot of clubs and I said, did everybody get their certificates? And th nobody raises their hands and it turns out, you know, the person I mailed them to still has them in their hot hands. Uh, because they have not had a club meeting to pass them out. So I hope you all got yours. I, I do not know. All right. So these are the topics. So here, we're here to talk about Virginia QSO party. So this is meant to be a party and not a contest. And by party, I meant uh, don't focus so much on keeping your rate up, although some people do that. But, you know, take an opportunity to say hello to people once in a while and and exchange a quick chat with your friends on the air. It's 2021 March. If it's local time, it's 10 a.m. in the morning until midnight on Saturday and eight to eight on Sunday. Those are pretty easy hours, no night hours, uh, easy to do. If you're looking for the best frequency to be on because you have not done this before and you wanna know where to go, if you're on a single sideband HF, you go to 3860 on 80 meters and you go up or down a little bit and listen for someone calling. That's the best place to start. If you're only on FM, then uh, 146, 580, which is two meters and go up and down a little bit and look for someone calling. And, uh, and that should get you at least one or two contacts on, on FM. For logging, you have to record your, your logs somehow, your, your, uh, your contacts. We accept paper or electronic logs uh, if you're doing paper, then, you know, you have to submit a summary sheet and the summary sheet is something you can download from our website and it just contains 
header information like your name and call sign and address and what category you're going to enter. If you're doing an electronic log, all that summary sheet information is in the header of the Cabrillo file. And then you have to record the frequency mode, date, time, your call sign, a serial number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and your QTH. The lists of QTHs are available up on our website. And then you have to record his call sign, serial number, and QTH. This is pretty standard information that's on any, any log form. If you're going to do electronic logging, then the two most popular electronic logs that you can use are N1MM or the, which is free. It's a little hard to get started with, or the N3FJP Virginia QSO party program, which you can download off the internet. That is very easy, very intuitive. You can load it, you know, if you're in a rush, but it costs, I don't know, six or seven dollars. So that's how you get started. You show up, you turn your radio on, you go to 3860 and you start making calls and you are in business. Uh, I do search and pounce mostly because I'm looking for, for people who are aggressive. You'll hear people calling CQ Virginia QSO party. You know, this is W2YE. So you just tune around and listen and someone will be calling. And you answer with your call sign one time, MinQ 4 k and then he will come back and you remember you have his call sign already. So you listen for his QTH and serial number and he'll say your call sign, the QTH and serial number. And if you got that all right, then you answer QSL, meaning you've received that. Okay. And give him your QTH and serial number, you know, QSL Fairfax County zero one. And then you do it again and again and again. You do it a thousand times and you too can be a winner in the Virginia QSO party. All right, so, so given all of the, the above, you know, this is pretty easy. People have some interesting questions that have, that have come up over time. And the first one is, can I announce my intention to operate a station, my hours and probable bands and frequencies? And the answer is yes. We even have a page up on our website that we are trying to populate called announced operations. You go to our website, the second or third entry down says announced operations. And you can go down there and anyone who sends me their information saying they're gonna be on the air from a particular county, I'll put your call sign up there. Can I self spot? No. So by tradition, I guess more than anything else, calling stations do not spot themselves. So, so but spotting means something very specific. Uh, spotting is reporting your call sign and frequency to a DX cluster or similar system. So you don't report yourself to the DX cluster. However, some station that answers to your call or some other station that's listening to you, they can spot you up on the DX cluster or similar system. So, and we can also use spotting nets, DX clusters, et cetera. You can use those to find stations to contact. And in the big contesting world, that's called assisted. Uh, we don't draw a distinction between non-assisted and assisted. Feel free to use all those spotting nets and DX clusters, et cetera. And as a matter of fact, we have two things that you can use up on our website. The first one is donated by Andy in one RA. And he does something called APRS Mobile County Tracker. And if you go up to his website, he'll show you a little map of, of the state of Virginia with all the counties and independent cities, you know, colorfully outlined and the mobile stations that report to him. And you can kind of watch those stations move throughout Virginia. And then John KX40 from the Falkier Amateur Radio Association provides a, uh, a Virginia QSO party spotting network. So think of that as a DX cluster devoted exclusively to the Virginia QSO party. And I use that myself. I'll go up there and I'll, I'll click on it and, you know, I'll see who's calling right now and go and try to get them. And in particular, what I had fun doing last year was following a couple of the uh, more prolific mobiles across the state of Virginia. And uh, I'll get, I'll talk more about those in a minute. What do I do if I don't get all the, exchange or information well you ask for it again you know and you say you know what is your what is your qth what qth just ask for it again if you're a foreign station you know they don't have a qth per se so 
just use DX for their QTH. If when you get all said and done with that, you don't get everything, just leave it blank. Uh, you don't have a valid contact, but leave the QSO data in the log in case the other station did get, get all the data and he'll get credit for it. So who puts this thing on? We, we have a committee and there's a Henry K2BFY. He writes our e-scoring software. We rescore all the logs that are submitted. So, uh, you know, your, your logging program may give you a score. You may think it's wrong. You may try to change it. It does not matter. You submit your log to us, we will rescore it and that'll be the score we use. That's me, Eric, AJ4LN over here. Uh, he does our actual scoring. So Henry writes the software. Eric usually actually runs the program and scores all the logs. John, KX40 from the Falker Amateur Radio Association, he helps us with plaque scoring. I've been known to make mistakes. You know, usually no more than two or three major mistakes per QSO party. But John, uh, at the end there, provides a nice sanity check and makes sure the plaques go to the right people. Uh, this is Marty, NV3H. Uh, he's developing our online submittal portal. It worked pretty well last year. About half our logs were submitted online last year. We're hoping more get submitted online this year. Uh, about a month ago, he looked at his code he wrote last year, and he said, boy, that was really bad code. I'm going to have to rewrite that. So he, he's in the process of doing that now. And this is Barry, KD4BK. You know, I hope you all got your certificates, but if you didn't, they're out there somewhere. And if you're if you really want one, send me an email. I will I'll make you another certificate and mail it to you. But on that certificate, it'll say something like, you know, 27th High, Albemarle County, or, you know, whatever it is. You know, you could be, you know, with one voice contact, you could be, you know, number one, uh, low power, single side band, technician class, Albemarle County. You know, who knows what that little title on there is your achievement level. So Barry's automating that process. It usually takes me about three hours, four hours to go down all the logs and, and manually work those levels. And, and he's automating that for me. Uh, this is John KX4. I mentioned that's that spotting network he runs for the Virginia QSO party. And this is what it looks like here on the right hand side. And this, I usually just open it up and leave it open on my computer and uh, every minute or so this thing will update and the new stations that people hear will show up on the top right here. And I can look at it and generally tell if I've talked to them already. And if not, I'll try to tune there somewhere. And you see, here's a couple of mobile stations. And uh, I like trying to follow those around the state of Virginia. And this is Andy, uh, K1RA. He, he does this mobile tracker and here's the state of Virginia in fancy colors and the mobiles that are reporting to him using APRS will show up on here and will show where they are at any given time. Uh, if, if you're running a mobile and you want to uh, participate in this, you've got to send Andy an email. And if you go to this website right here, it'll tell you how to send him an email with your uh, information necessary to, uh, to track you. And this is a uh, mic in 4 CF. So if you're using in one MM or one of the other fancy logging programs, you can put something in there called a call history file. And this is a file containing the call signs and location of, of uh, stations that will auto populate your electronic log. So you, you start typing in a person's call sign and you know, K1 and the thing may automatically auto populate RZ and then it will automatically auto populate the, uh, the QTH, in this case, Maryland. Uh, so that file is up there. If you, if you like to use that, it's available for download. Uh, one caution with that is it's easy to uh, make a mistake on this because you start typing it and it auto populates the call sign, but it's the wrong call sign. I know that from personal experience because there's a very, very, used to be a very aggressive, a very uh, strong station in Q4I. And of course I'm in Q4K, but in Q4I would be in all of the, the uh, 
call sign history files for the big contest. And so someone would start calling, typing in Q4 and it would populate the I with, you know, Virginia. That was also in Virginia, I think. And the guy would think he was all right. And then I'd have to go back and try to get him to change it. And that slowed things down. So you have to be careful here. All right, so we had some mobiles that were incredibly, I mean, just incredible last year. One was W4GO. And this is his rig down here on the bottom. And this is his HF antenna up here on top, you know, an LVIS antenna. And he did 2,121 QSOs last year, contacted 82 counties and independent cities, mostly on 40 and 80 meters. He said he did 673 miles in 35 Virginia counties last year. And he, he also told me that he was the only station making QSOs in seven counties. That means he by himself activated seven counties last year. And so these are his routes. In 2018, he did you know the eastern part of Virginia. In 2019, he kind of did the southern part. And this was his route last year. You know, he went down all the way down here to Lee County, you know, all those things way down in the southwest corner and then came back up. I mean, just phenomenal. I, I followed, I must have gotten, you know, eight contacts with him as he went around on that route last year. That was really phenomenal. And there were two more, NB3A, did 606 QSOs. And again, look at that nice <laughs> HF antenna on that thing. I wonder what people thought when he, you know, drove down the road with that. And N3, NG3V did 370 QSOs, again, primarily 80 and 40. Really phenomenal efforts. So this year we have 27 plaques. We have uh, the get on the air plaque. Then we have plaques for only Virginia stations. These are pretty much the same ones that we've had in, in past years. Uh, and there's a plaque there for everybody, whatever you're interested in. There's high power, there's low power, there's QRP, there's phone, there's CW. Uh, there's a digital plaque in here somewhere. There's single operators. There's multiple operators. There's a single operator mobile, multiple operator mobile. There's an expedition, two club plaques. And we also have plaques for any uh, single operator station anywhere, not necessarily in the state of Virginia, and so novice tech, rookie, single band, high operator, most Virginia counties, independent cities contacted, single operator, Virginia QSOs only. That's for small stations that don't make a lot of DX contacts, but can, you know, on 40 or 80 with a low antenna hit Virginia. And here's a youth plaque by the USS Wisconsin Amateur Radio Club. And then here are some plaques for stations outside Virginia. All right, so we want, I want to talk about this get on the air plaque a little bit. The idea came from Teresa, KG4TVM, during uh, this, this same presentation, as a matter of fact, to the old Virginia hams. And uh, she asked, you know, if, if her, if, uh, you know, some kid could be, child could be uh, eligible for that youth plaque if he wasn't licensed. And uh, we, we asked about that to the sponsor, and we finally ended up just doing a new plaque, and we'll call it the Go to Plaque, taking after ARRL Field Day. So this is a Virginia station at which a non-licensed person participates in the VQP under the supervision of a licensed control operator. The participant does all the functions, talking on the radio, logging, et cetera, et cetera, just like we're supposed to be doing, during, doing at the Go to Station in Field Day. And this is limited to a single participant. Uh, okay, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So in the log, in order to tell who these people are, somewhere you gotta put the, the, the words go to station in the soapbox. And that way I, I know which ones are the go to station and which ones are not. And then of course, the name of the control operator somewhere. Hey Gordon, excuse me, how, how are you doing in terms of progress because i like to keep briefings under you know at about 30 minutes plus questions and answers okay well, how, how much time do i have left i think about 15 minutes got it okay so 
one additional thought, any licensed person can also participate in a multiple operator station, you know, as long as there's a control operator there. We've done that in the past. So if you're running a multi-multi, just, you know, let that person operate. You can supervise them, put their name in. They will get a certificate. I'm about halfway through, so I will uh, speed up a little bit. So last year, there was this thing called the State QSO Party Championships. And we wondered what impact that would have on us. And the State QSO Party Championships uh, focuses on participation in all the State QSO parties and kind of runs an aggregate score. There's 47 parties in all. Total number of contacts in all the parties times the number of QSO parties entered. You need to make at least two QSOs. So last year, we saw a big increase in the number of entries. This could be attributed to the state QSO party championships, or it could be attributed to, you know, the pandemic and people staying home. But we jumped from 449 up to 613 logs. Really, really big increase. And we had a lot of logs that were small logs, you know, two QSOs, three QSOs, less than 10 QSOs. These are the plaques we award and how many people can competed in those categories last year. Last year, there was only one person who participated in this, competed for this single operator youth plaque. And there's digital mode and Virginia mobile multiple operator had three. So, you know, there's some area down here, if you wanna pick one of these, where you would really have a serious opportunity to, to win a plaque. Uh, we do need to make more effort to, uh, get participation in the counties independent cities. Last year, we only had fixed station logs from 77 of the 133 counties and independent cities, you know, a little over half. We need to do a better, uh, make a better effort at that. If you're interested, here are the places where we do not get much participation over the years from uh, fixed sites. We do get a lot of mobiles down there, but not many from fixed sites. Uh, and so here's no logs in the past five years from these counties and independent cities. Okay, let's see here. We've seen the presentations before. We don't have a paper scoring party anymore. The number of paper logs we're getting is almost down to zero, 16 out of 600 last year. I did look at how operator stations make an impact. So here are the top three single operator stations last year. The top single operator station was K1 HTV with over 300,000 points. The second highest single operator station was W4 Geo Mobile with almost 300,000 points. I mean, that's incredible for a mobile operation. And third was K3 SK with 224,000 points. And look at how they differed. The high station was low power. And this is consistent. Doesn't matter if you're high power or low power in this contest. There's plenty of stations that you can reach with low power. So, but his advantage was, and the reason he came out real high on scores, you notice he only had like less than a thousand QSOs. The second high station had 2000, but he got all of these extra points because he operated CW and he contacted Virginia Mobiles. And so that was his advantage. His QSO number was lower, but he did CW and he contacted Virginia Mobiles. And that's what pushed his score up. W4 Geo Mobile had this incredibly high number of contacts, 2,121. And they were all phone. There were some bad contacts in there. A couple were with other mobiles, but primarily all phone. And so he, his advantage was he was able to contact the same station over and over and over and over again as he moved from county to county to county. So you look at K3SK. So he was a big fixed station, high power. He got a thousand, but that meant that generally speaking, these thousand stations were all different stations. So he had to reach out pretty far to contact more and more different stations. Whereas the mobile operation here had the opportunity to contact the same station over and over and over, and maybe even on different bands. You know, as you move from one county into another, you hit them on 80 for a while, then you go 40 for a while, and then you maybe do 20 or 15, although 20 or 15 were not good. And uh, so this was an impress. And so it was kind of interesting to see 
how different stations are able to capitalize on their different operating skills. Okay, we're gonna skip ahead here. <clears throat> Everybody, uh, these are the bands. You can look at these bands. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, 3860 is, is where to go if, if you want one band and you can do it. Everybody gets a certificate. So this year, because of coronavirus, we're gonna mail to all Virginia logs. We're just gonna mail them to the people. And if you're a non-Virginia station, if you say certificate yes in the log, then we'll, we'll mail you a certificate. Otherwise, we are not going to do that. Now we're gonna skip way ahead. All this is available up on the website if you want to enjoy it. Come on, come on. There we go. Logging programs. The dominant logging program was N1MM and the second was N3FJP and a smattering of others, but, but those are the two dominant programs. Counties and independent cities not activated. We try to drive this thing down to zero. We've only reached zero one time. And last year we did have one county independent city that was not activated out of the 133. And you'll see that more here in a moment. This last year it was King William. King William has always had contacts in the past, you know, at least going back to 2006. But for some reason last year, there was nobody there. Really, really strange. Where do you go? I talked about 3860. This is where the contacts were made. Here's 80 meters of the 61,000 or so QSOs made last year, 37,000 over half were on 80 meters. And I would expect that that would stay true this year also. You're gonna to have to go to a lower frequency in order to stay within the state of Virginia. And uh, the long frequencies just weren't very good. A little more activity on 40 meters, almost none on 20, 15, 10, six, you know, some activity on two meters. But if, if you can, this is where you wanna be. You wanna be on 80 meters. And this is where during the day the QSOs were so we started out very heavy in the beginning. And then, you know, when it reaches midnight, there's not very many people on the air anymore. So there was pretty level number of QSOs during the day. And the same with Sunday right here, you know, picked up a little bit at the end, but uh, it's pretty constant during the day. These out here before, you know, the contest even starts uh, were wrong times on their logging programs. So they submitted something and for some reason they had the time set wrong on their computer. And look at this, we skip all of this. All this data is up there. You may have seen these before. I color coded where all the contacts are made. And here it was last year. That mobile that went down the Western part of the state of Virginia got a lot of contacts out here. And you know, this green means, you know, over a hundred or over a thousand. And that mobile operation did a lot of those. And right there is King William. You know, who would have thought, but there it is. Otherwise we do pretty well throughout the state of Virginia. We have two club plaques. One is high score combined, uh, high club combined score. That's where we take the score from all your logs and we just add the scores together. Here's the Falkier Amateur Radio Association, way, way up here, almost uh, 2,500 points when you add all their logs together. Here's PVRC, uh, I think this is Rappahannock Radio Association contest group and a bunch of other people down here. They've been dominating this for a lot of years, but they don't have any big stations, but what they have is a lot of people who submit logs. And last year, the Falkier Amateur Radio Association submitted 53 logs. So none of them in and of themselves were huge logs, but you know, the aggregate of, their, of those logs was still pretty big. There's PVRC with 47, 
I'm from Sterling Park Amateur Radio Club. We're way down here somewhere. I don't, right here. We had 10. We are convinced that we only have 10 because a lot of the members of our club belong to other clubs, particularly the Loudon Amateur Radio Club. And I'm pretty sure that Henry, the guy who writes our software scoring program, who used to be the president of the Loudon Amateur Radio Club, put something in there. So when he scores it, you know, every other score to Sterling gets changed to the Loudon Amateur Radio Club. We're pretty sure that's what's happening here. This is the second club plaque, High Club, Virginia QSOs only. Again, Falkier is the dominant club. The Loudon Amateur Radio Club right here made a shot at it in one year and they won by 5,000 points or so. And, uh, but they had a really big station. Unfortunately, that, that person became SK and, and the club score in this contest in this party has gone down since then. Who gets all the plaques? 27 plaques, who gets them all? The Falker Amateur Radio Association ended up with 12 of the 26 plaques that were awarded last year. You know, that's phenomenal. I accuse them of coordinating this, you know, to make sure that someone is in all the categories. So they, they're competing everywhere, but they, they tell me that, no, they don't coordinate it at all. It just, it just happens that way. And everyone else gets a smattering. I am continually amazed at high scores. Every year we get new high scores. I, I, I would thought by this time, you know, everything that could be done to get a higher score would be done, but it's just not true. So last year we had five new high scores. Here's high mobile single operator, almost 300,000 points. Uh, high DX station, high Virginia operator, phone only high power. That was again, the W4GO mobile station who was running high power. High Virginia club, Virginia QSOs only and high single operator, Virginia QSOs only. In addition, we had two stations that won more than one plaque. W4GO won four plaques. You know, so that, that was an outstanding mobile operation and he just, he just swept everything. And WK3FRG won two plaques right here rookie as well as a uh, high single operator VHF. You want to, so we do certificates every year and we try to make sure everybody gets a certificate. Uh, starting in 2016, we started just having the various clubs design a certificate. Uh, for this year, it'll be the Loudon Amateur Radio Club and we'll go through to their certificate here. And this is what they decided, pictures that they decided to put on there. So they have a big field day operation. Uh, they like supporting contacts with the amateur radio on the International Space Station. And this right here is Steve uh, KG1S. He's kind of a, a promoter of that. And, and he goes around and helps the clubs, helps the schools in the local area arrange those. And they like the party also. How are we doing? I think we're still, in terms of state QSO parties, probably third. Uh, I can't find out how many logs California submitted. I can't seem to get access to their website. Pennsylvania did 708 logs last year. We did 613 and everyone else, I think, probably did a few less than us. So that's very good considering that, uh, you know, we're not the largest state in terms of number of licensed operators. This is the increase in the number of logs that I was able to, to determine last year, you know, either based on pandemic or based on the state QSO party championships. So we went up 36%. Arizona went up 106%. So they started off with a small number of logs, you know, and they, there's probably, I'll pick a number, you know, 100 or 200 or 150 people who got on the air who were not there due to the state QSO party championships or the pandemic and really boost Arizona up. We probably had this about the same amount of, of additional logs, but our increase wasn't as much. So we do very well. Uh, and that's because people like you, you know, with your 30 people on here are all going to get on the air this year and, and submit logs and we will do better than this. Or a two minute warning. Oh, I guess you're done. 
two minute warning is good. So we have two minutes for good questions. Oh, we have, yeah, this was an excellent briefing. And that whole thing is available up on the website. And I will also send a PDF version to, uh, to John and I'll get that off tonight or tomorrow. And I see most everyone is on there. So I'm gonna do a screenshot. There we go. Anyone have any questions for Gordon? Last up, oh yes, go ahead. Idiot question. What is the definition of low power and high power? 100 watts is what we use. Mainly because we never thought about it before. So we, we just say 100 watts. Uh, Gordon? Yes. Uh, Larry here. I just have a question. We've done this before. And, and Jim Owen, of course, is a great, the great uh, master here of the CUSO party in, in Virginia and Albemarle County. Uh, just to let other people know, when you're identifying yourself, Albemarle County, we use the, the symbol or the letters ALB. Alpha, Lima, Bravo. And uh, that's what you did show. So when you do go into this uh, uh, email that you're going to send out to us, people should look at that and it would give you instructions in terms of, you know, <laughs> what indeed you're saying, along with your serial number, one, two, three, four, five, six, how many contacts. They're after the location of your QTH. So they're looking for ALB as you uh, you sign off they will give you like he, he said fairfax county ff ffx and so forth and so on that's uh, that's pretty good and, and i'd certainly commend people to look for those mobile uh, stations because i had a tremendous number just following one station every time he'd cross into a new county you hit him again hit him again and uh, made it an exchange you get a lot of points that way as you go throughout virginia it's kind of fun Yes, I did ask uh, a couple of stations this year. I said, you know, you should compete in this uh, multiple operator mobile operation. You know, get yourself a driver, you know, so you're not driving and talking at the same time. We'll see what happens. And the list of counties with their abbreviations is up on our website, along with the, uh, if you're doing paper logging, along with, you know, the, the summary sheet that you can fill out. Uh, it's a it's a very simple party. I the party thing I think is important. I remember the first year I participated in this, I couldn't have been licensed more than you know a year or two, and I got up there and I was spinning the dial and I heard people three people just chatting. I don't even remember where they were from. They were just talking, and then every two or three minutes they would say, you know, we're we're working Virginia QSO party. Anyone out there want to make a contact? They would pause for a moment and say, okay, I didn't hear anybody. And they would go on chatting. And that's when it dawned on me that, you know, this is really meant to be an enjoyable thing. You know, it's, 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 the conversation Gordon, is fun, but enjoy yourself also. Question? Yes. Um, one of our members was, uh, is interested in, in uh, the digital side of operation. So um, what, what digital modes are, are typically used? Uh, so digital population, digital participation is very low. We typically only get a handful of logs. I think we did something like uh, maybe 200 or 300 QSOs in digital altogether. Most of them were radio teletype. A couple of people have tried FT8 or FT4, but uh, that's not, and so far, but so far, that's not has not been very popular. Okay. So it would be okay to do, but uh, but the the odds of of getting very many contacts would be pretty low. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yes, Gordon. I was just going to say for the um, for the the folks that, that just have technician licenses, it's still possible to get yourself a certificate just by just using an HT, right? Oh, absolutely. You submit a log, you will get a certificate. We get logs. If you look through the the presentation here, it's not up on the on here anymore, but we'll get logs. You know, with one contact or two contacts or three contacts, that's fine. As long as you submit a log, you will get a certificate. Uh, yeah. 
And, and depending on where you are, heck, you might have three three places because you can hit Charlottesville because that's separate from the yes. county. And then if you just happen to be near uh, near the Green County line, you can get Green County. Who knows? <clears throat> you might get Madison as well. <laughs> so you got four counties there. You know, you have your own county. And uh, you might end up being number one, right? So you could end up, when we go through this certificate thing, you could be, you know, number one uh, low power VHF only technician class in Albemarle County. And you're, a, you're the number one person. So we also, amusingly, we'll get some logs and they'll score out as zero because, you know, there'll only be two or three or four or five contacts in there. And for some reason, they'll miss some information. You know, they'll, they'll forget to put in QTH or, or who knows what. And we try to send an email back to them and say, you know, you miss this stuff, do something. And sometimes we don't hear back. So they get listed as having a zero score, but they'll still get a, a certificate. They participated. Yeah. It's hey, all Gordon, good. Gordon, can you tell us again, is that defined as a bad contact? Uh, that uh, always upsets some people. They don't like that word, but what is a bad contact? Number one question. Number two, I presume when you're dealing with HTs, you're dealing simplex, right? Yes. Yes, no repeaters. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, that's a bad contact. Everyone calls them a bad contact or a busted contact. That just means that you're missing information. Right. In the big contests, not with us, but in the big contests, it could also mean that you copied the information wrong. You got the QTH yeah. or the serial number or somebody's age wrong. We're, we don't check that. We, we talked about it in the past. It's not a hard programming thing, but, but we still think we are a party. And the point should be we enjoy it more than we're concerned about checking, all, dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. And that doesn't make much sense. But Are there any uh, additional questions? If not, I'd like to wrap up this portion of the meeting. If anyone has any questions, I'm sure they can email Gordon. Yes, I, I usually answer questions within a day. And I thank you very much, folks, for inviting me. I, and I appreciate these uh, presentations. And I, ho I hope to hear you all on the air coming up in two weekends. Right, well, thank, thank you very you. much. Bob Vermanko, I see you.